to filter the existing food, uh, footprints of the existing autophotos by what the user is interested in. User selects the time range, it can be a certain year or uh, start year, end year range. And maybe if you can so, uh, about uh, six uh, or seven minutes. International land survey now around two and a half years. Oh. So the basic goal okay. was to, and then the other way was hometown. Okay, here's an example. There are coverage for the year uh, 2022. But if you're user is interesting in this area, so if he orders. Orto photos from 2022, uh, user gets nothing. Now, oh, interesting to see what, what will follow. Yeah. Okay. Here are some old coverages from the 1930s. You get an, some idea about how scattered the data is. Okay, then we had uh, uh, some ready-made components. Uh, uh, national uh, SDE portal, which we uh, decided to um, add some new features to that portal. Okay, okay I'll stop here. Uh, this is part of the end result. You can see that when user has uh, selected a certain bounding box, the time scale here is updated automatically. It shows only the images that are available on that certain area. There's some Im one image uh, one year from the 1930s and the next couple from 1950s. And then new ones uh, come every third year by, or by itself. And this uh, scale, time range is uh, updating automatically when user is panning and browsing, panning and zooming on the uh, on the user interface. What comes next? There is a time slider, I, I believe. Mm. Okay, this is uh, something about the technical uh, solution that we made. Uh, we have, a, uh, let's say, 100,000 images. And if all these 100 uh, bounty boxes or polygons are transferred to, to open layers client, uh, it, would, uh, it will be uh, quite slow to use. So we have a hybrid, uh, hybrid mm, solution that uh, on a small scale uh, we are generating the index map on with map, uh, web map service. It's a time enabled and when we zoom in closer we switch to vector data because with vector, vector data we can deliver more attributes and make uh, it's more um, possible to uh, give more possibilities for the, for the browser client to make uh, filtering and queries at what these images are about. Yeah. Sorry? I think there was some audio afterwards. Like maybe there is audio of the hmm, I'm not sure. It may work now. <laughs> Should we try? <laughs> because this is the first time when I see these slides. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's just uh, that I need to, need to do my best. Okay, this is about uh, selecting different years.
and how the coverage is changing, but uh, that's, you saw that part of already. Okay, then the uh, web client, it has two, two modes. You can select one certain year, or you can select a wider uh, time range. And the index map is updating automatically uh, according to the selection. Mm, when we have the swipe tool, so you can compare two selected uh, auto photos from different times. And the, both the left hand side and right hand side, they can be whatever uh, image that exists. Okay, will you come here? Because this part is something that I do not know anything about. I know that. <laughs> I can say something about this. So uh, this is our admin tool. And you can see the selections that you can do for when you're adding the uh, VMS layer with time dimension. You can select uh, like an animation player for a continuous time series and for this this purpose we created a new mode that uh, handles these historical photos so we you will need to or you can uh, select another layer that is registered to Oscari to uh, as the metadata to provide those uh, well the vector features that we use to update the um, user interface that shows um, the years that have photos. Can I ask what software we're looking at now? Is uh, this, is, this is uh, Oscari. Uh, so this is uh, like a new feature for Oscari. So this is the uh, admin tool you get with Oscari. But this, uh, so this is basically a layer listing. We see the old aerial photos here. You can see that it's a time series layer. And this, this part here is the admin UI that you can configure. When you have a time dimension, you can select the metadata, la metadata layer for it that will uh, be used to generate those uh, dots on the timeline based on the map viewport and, and uh, yeah, and the attribute for those vector features that will be used for uh, to what, what property is the year on the on the data, and then you can select if if uh, on which level you want to query the vector features or at what zoom level you stop using it because it's too uh, there's too much features if you look from like the whole country. So it will just show the dimensions on the VMS layer. Uh, let's see what comes next. I haven't seen these slides either before this, so. <laughs> uh, Uh, yeah, we hit the main news and our user, um, daily users went like, uh, I don't know, 50 times more than normal. So we had to pump up some new servers and yeah, basically double the server capacity to handle all those new users. Uh, yes, of course. We are actually uh, we are uh, also the like the core 
Oscar developer, our main contributor team at National Land Survey. So, yeah, we just made it available in Oscar for everyone. Before, before that, I can tell something about the technique in, uh, and data. The uh, images are GeoTIFF images. Uh, we had a uh, uh, map server used already. So uh, we, what we had to do was to generate accurate footprints. Because uh, in our tile index uh, before, we used that bounding boxes. But uh, in the beginning of the, you see that the, uh, the, uh, there are huge no data areas uh, in these historical auto photos. So, so we had to generate accurate uh, footprint polygons. And we used that uh, for that a certain uh, open source script or program made in the uh, University of Alaska. Just right now, I do not remember the name. <laughs> and uh, then we have the tile index in uh, PostGIS, and it's uh, updated daily because it's the same uh, stories for the auto photos that we are using every day for new production, and also they, all the time they are creating and, uh, new historical auto photos. We put them all in the same packet because we think that uh, if an image is from yesterday, it's uh, more like historical. And, <clears throat> and yes, and, and for the performance reasons, uh, we had to make a, a little bit tricks on the database because map server is, uh, it is stupid with rendering. If user selects a wide time range, and it finds, for example, seven auto photos in a pile. Map server just starts rendering from the oldest until the newest one. And actually, only the newest pixels are meaningful. Map server could not handle this case, so we decided to handle it in the database. We have triggers that uh, analyze the coverage of the auto photos and they are um, putting an end date for each auto photo file. So what, is, what was the last, uh, last valid date for that image? After that, we have something newer. Yeah, and that's uh, something that I, I was dealing with. Hello. Wow. Thank you. Uh, I, I might have missed that in the beginning, um, but I was wondering if the, the paper pictures that you had, how you georeference them? Because like at some point you need to say this is a picture of, I don't know, an area outside Helsinki or uh, with the exact boundaries of the picture, right? And was that a manual process or was it like an automated scanning process? Uh, uh, Sorry, I do not really know how they are producing these uh, uh, autorectified uh, images, but I believe that they use the same software than they are using in a normal production. And I also, at least part of the images are not actually on paper, but on negative, negative films. Uh, yeah, you can. Um, so this is a new feature in Oscary. Um, how configurable is it for ordinary, well, for other author photograph, other services? So, I mean, I was just thinking, your solution here, I mean, you've, you've tailored your services to access the data correctly. Is that something that other people uh, who have author photo services, they would need to do something similar? Or, you know? 
It will, will it just work out of the box? <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry. My, my, my colleague is busy. Uh, so, so the... Oh, I'm over there. So the VMST layer is, you, you can just use whatever you have. Mm. Uh, obviously the tricky one is the metadata layer. But um, you can use, um, so it's basically querying uh, OGC API features, uh, API now, and you can configure the connection parameters and the year or the property attribute for the feature so it's, you can use it. We could document better how to, how to use it. Yes. But yeah, also, obviously, if, if you're interested, yeah, yeah. Please, please contact us. Yeah. It, lo it looks really good. Yeah. Well, actually, the end result is uh, logically rather close to stack because we are getting metadata for its uh, granule or its orthophoto from the, as a JSON data from OTC API features service. The idea is pretty close to stack idea. So we are just enhancing webmap service with that. Uh, I would like to ask, um, can users download the images as their own geotiffs or is it all online? Like if they wanted to bring it into their own project and also do you have a, um, like license issues if people wanted to use it for their own research or private companies wanted to um, use the images? Uh, well, the license part is easy. They are creative commons for uh, attribute only. So it's simple to use. The old historical images and our new images have the same license. Uh, about downloading, okay, users can do it if they know how to do it. <laughs> we have a, a beta service, a web coverage service, and it's possible that it, it is open, but uh, there are not so many uh, web coverage service clients uh, generally used. And we are planning to improve these uh, download services in the next phase. But now, well, what works pretty well is the browsing part. Just comment on the outsider. So I'm not working for National Answer, eh? but you can actually add the layer in QGIS, and then you can start using. And I, in my personal hobby, I've created some maps to background of my, my summer cottage from 1950s. Very short question. Th thank you. I'm very impressed. I, I can't wait to, to go and click myself. But a question. Uh, do you have any plans to do the same thing with, same thing with historical maps? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have been involved in a, a project that we have uh, uh, georeferenced about 40,000 historical maps from the 1850s, uh, even from a uh, Russian time, and uh, the georeferencing is ready, but the services to so the result for the users is the <laughs> and under construction. We are going to have to wrap this up. I really want you guys to give these folks a, a standing ovation or a clap or something for just extra fly by the seat of your pants.